Welcome to the 78th Annual Cold Spring Harbor Symposium on Quantitative Biology. I'm Lori Dempsey, Senior Editor of Nature Immunology, and with me is my guest, Yasmin Belkade, Senior Investigator at the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Disease. Welcome. And you have a, a long-standing interest in host-parasite interactions. Uh, could you tell us about this? So I've always been fascinated by parasitism, that is a form of interaction um, in which the microbe relies entirely on the host for its development. So for an immunologist, really trying to understand how the microbes are capable to utilize the immune system as a home and manipulate various aspects of the tissue responses is, I think, a fascinating um, quest. Uh, in the context of this question, uh, over the last few years, we have tried to understand the mechanism by which microbes are capable to persist mm -hmm. and the mechanism by which each tissue is actually capable to respond to those infections. So more recently, we have begun to integrate uh, another element of tissue-specific responses that is actually the microbiota. That is, of course, an intrinsic part of all the different tissues that are exposed to the environment. So it's not just the, the immune system, but it's also the gut inhabitants that are influencing these responses. It's actually more than the gut. Uh, it is actually clear that this microbe is actually colonizing all the different surfaces. They're going to be present in your GI tract, in your skin, in your lung, in all the different barriers of the site. And all these microbes present there can actually interfere with how a microbe, a pathogenic microbe, is actually perceived by the immune system. Oh, I see, I see. So is the, the commensal microbiota playing more of a protective role, or uh, how do you envision this? They go actually in the whole range. So some of these interactions are very, very positive. For example, this microbe can actually compete for resources and space with pathogen and prevent colonization. Some of these microbes can actually induce protective responses. They can actually influence immunity and influence protective responses. They have been shown, for example, to promote T cell responses, B cell responses, to favor the production of various innate responses, such as antimicrobial peptide. Okay. And all of that has beneficial. But of course, this can go negative. Okay. If you have actually aberrant kind of microbe colonization, if you have too much of a sensing of this microbe, or okay. this microbe in the wrong place, they can actually lead to pathology. So how does that then uh, how do you have a dysbiosis set up? What type of, of insults do you get that, that would set up an adverse type of response? So these dysbiosis can occur in many different kind of circumstances. The first one could be that, for example, you have too much antibiotics. Okay. By itself, they can actually reset the system and then what you have is a different kind of microbiota when you have lost a large number of beneficial microbes. The other circumstance is the infection. Acute infection, for example, have been shown to trigger dysbiosis and create an emergence of microbes that are actually more inflammatory. Okay. Other element may be in an appropriate diet. Diet okay. being an important influencer of microbiota can actually trigger an outgrowth of certain bacteria that can have detrimental output. Okay, and you say that, that you have uh, different mucosal surfaces mm -hmm. that um, uh, where this microorganisms and commensal uh, can play a protective role. Mm -hmm. Is it the same in, in all the barrier surfaces or are there slight differences? So there is, this is actually something that is really an ongoing research in my lab and others, which is trying to understand how each tissue and each niche is controlled by its microbiota. So for example, we have a beginning of understanding what is happening in the GI tract, but this by itself is completely not completely understood. But all the sites remain really unexplored. So we have last year explored how the skin microbiota was actually important for okay. the control of immunity. And what we found there is the fact that the skin microbiota was able to influence immunity in a way that was distinct of okay. the way by which the microbiota of the gut influence immunity. So it's very likely that it's going to be true for other surfaces of the body. Okay. And how do you distinguish those? What type of experiments have you used to dissect between what's happening in the gut mm -hmm. versus what's happening in the skin. Could you elaborate on To be able actually to do that, what you have to rely on is a lot of germ-free experiments. So the mice are actually going to be raised in complete absence of microbe. And you actually give them back defined microbes in different surfaces and treat them by antibiotic in other surfaces to make sure there is no colonization. Okay. So you need a very controlled mode of interaction that is actually uh, maintained in germ-free facilities. Okay. And for um, the scenario in, in humans. Are mm -hmm. there any uh, human diseases that arise when you have this dysbiosis of, of commensal immune cell interactions? So one of the most striking example of this is probably IBD and Crohn's disease, okay. in which there is actually clear evidence that disruption of the dialogue with the microbe, aberrant response to this microbe, overinflammation induced by this microbe, and in particular certain agents of this microbiota can promote an influence the development of the disease. 
But this is not the only one. Um, Helicobacter pylori, for example, is a commensal. Okay. It is clearly linked to cancer development, but it's also right. part of the gastrointestinal tract of many individuals that do not develop cancer. So this kind of microbe can lead to development of tumor in certain individuals. Uh, you have also the link between uh, this microbe and psoriasis, for example, okay. or atopic dermatitis. Okay. Atopic dermatitis, for example, has been shown to be characterized by outgrowth of Staphylococcus um, epidermis and Aries um, okay. commensals. Okay. Do you know of any particular um, uh, microbial product uh, that uh, is actually uh, influencing mm -hmm. uh, either a protective response or uh, uh, conversely that is initiating a um, a detrimental response? Mm -hmm. Can you sort out the, the sure. on a molecular level what's, what's So happening? this is something that is an active area of research also in many different places. Of course, some of them will be PSA, for example, from Bacteroides, okay. that has been shown to be quite important to control various aspects of immune responses, induced regulatory responses. But I will say that in the field, we remain a bit short of really what are the metabolites or microbial right. products that really influence our immune responses. Of course, some of the classical ones will be the TLR ligands that are right. actually produced right. by right. these microbes. Right. Right. But I will say that to date, uh, which microbial product really influence exactly which kind of responses remain uh, poorly explored. Okay. And perhaps more to your more recent work, or, mm -hmm. or work that was just published, you have uh, evidence that um, uh, host monocytes mm -hmm. that uh, can come into areas where mm -hmm. the, the barrier has been um, breached, mm -hmm. that they can actually play a, a role that is protective, mm -hmm. although uh, uh, in conventional ways that we think of them being more of a, a pro-inflammatory yeah. type of uh, participant. Can you talk a little bit more uh, about uh, sure. this more recent work? Sure. So. Mo inflammatory monocytes are classically um, understood as the population of effector cells that come in tissue to be able to control infection. However, the GI tract is an extremely reactive environment. If the cells arrive entirely loaded with effector potential without regulatory responses, what you will end up having is actually lesion that will lead to severe outcome for the host. So in the GI tract, even inflammatory cells are conditioned in a way that allow them to also have a regulatory property. Okay, just more or less suppress exactly. immune-related pathologies. And what is interesting okay. is the fact that this regulatory property is imposed by the microbiota itself. So in response to this microbiota, the monocytes are now capable to produce mediators that can suppress inflammatory responses. So really they play a role in so many different ranges of the immune responses, ranging from initiation, effector responses, regulation, but also this can also become dysregulated and lead to pathology. Right, right. Um, so, where are the future directions that you're taking your, uh, your research? So I think the future direction is some of the points you alluded to, which is trying to understand which kind of metabolites and product are really determinants mm -hmm. of the control of immune responses. What we're trying to understand, and this is not a question that I'm the only one to pursue, is how defined microbes can actually have a dominant role in controlling immune responses and understanding how in each tissue, each microbe is actually capable to influence differently immunity. Okay. And I think if we're able to gain some of this information that will allow us to be able to not only harness uh, this knowledge to just develop better therapeutic approach for vaccine and other strategy, mm -hmm. but also this could actually allow us to just know the correlation and association between defined microbe and pathogenic states. Okay. Okay. And Perhaps the last question, how does diet influence all of these microbe host interactions? So outside of antibiotics, diet is probably the most important factor by which you can manipulate these microbes. The microbiota is exquisitely sensitive to change in the diet. Okay. So by changing your diet and changing your microbiota, you have actually a profound influence on how your immune system and physiology as a whole can actually function. And I think another aspect of diet by itself, such as dietary nutrients, such as vitamin A metabolites, for example, okay. they can also directly influence immunity. So by changing your diet, you influence not only immunity, but also the microbiota, which in turn influence immunity. So the way by which we can manipulate most of our responses in a way that is quite practical is really also to try to understand what are the key elements in our diet and we can utilize to manipulate our immune responses and, and in certain case, pathology. Thank you very much. You're welcome.